Hi there, welcome to another episode of Harrison Hobbies. Today we are going to be looking at the Briggs & Stratton P2400 generator. So, I guess this generator has made a couple of appearances in past videos uh, as kind of a size comparison, but I've never actually been able to dive into it uh, just due to, uh, I don't know, not enough time, kids, new job, what have you. Plenty of excuses. Whenever I'd ordered these, I'd ordered two of them. They were on sale on Amazon for, I want to say they dropped down to like 450 bucks. And so I ended up picking up two. Uh, we had a power outage uh, whenever I got them, what, six, seven months ago. And so one of them I did open, I've used it. Uh, I keep it regularly maintained along with uh, the rest of my generators that very seldom get used here in the Pacific Northwest. I hadn't opened this one, I've never ran a parallel, so we'll probably break this video off into two chunks. The first chunk, we will do the standard Harrison Hobbies unboxing here, uh, get the oil in, do a startup, check out its waveform, uh, all of that, and then we will break off into a second video where we'll take the other one, we'll hook up a parallel kit, and then we'll try to induce something closer to 30 amps so we can actually make use of some of its port. Uh, so, without further ado, let's uh, dive into the unboxing. Okay, for starters here, we will cut open the bands uh, that are used to hold this. So, in the box, uh, standard, uh, standard equipment here. All right, if we move... And hopefully we don't break this table in half. Um, but you get your standard user's manual. You get some thicker closed cell foam there. We'll put that off to the side. The other wonderful thing right now is uh, my garage has a whole bunch of cabinetry and stuff that's been painted, drying over there. Uh, I've got a bunch of crap over here. So I'm in this tiny little space right now because uh, uh, my shop is also occupied with some stuff. So we'll make do with what we've got. on the ground here and lift stick this guy under the table so uh, typically in these videos I don't like to necessarily go into the specs of a generator uh, you can google it just as well as I can so uh, that's not something that we typically do, but things that this is going to come with is your fill funnel here and your Briggs & Stratton small engine oil. Uh, this is 10 weight, uh, 10 winter 30. Uh, I always say weight 30, I think everybody does, but as one of my viewers commented, it is winter. So uh, I guess let's take a brief second here and then we'll do a walk around. We will get some, uh, get some shots of the internals. We'll talk about this. Again, having actually used the other generator here, this is more than just an unboxing, so I can actually probably add a little bit of context as we go through the, uh, the process here. And then the last thing that we probably need to do here is they ship it with uh, this little band here. I think this is to keep the clamshell probably from vibrating apart. Likely their packaging engineering team thought that a necessity. So we'll pull that off and set that aside. And let's do a quick walk around. So like pretty much any other modern uh, inverter generator here, uh, you got your front, you're gonna have your three axis lights here. So you're gonna have your okay light. This will typically light up green during the course of normal operation. You're going to have the, uh, the hazard light here. So if you're ending up overloading the unit uh, with current, that light will start to trip. And then lastly, you have your oil here. So you also have your CO guard here. If it detects too much carbon monoxide in the air, then it automatically shuts the unit down. Uh, and your other slew of ports here, right? You got your, uh, your main reset. So if you trip your outlet, then you just have to wait a couple of minutes and then press that button again. You have your two USB ports here that are in a weatherproof little flap. Again, why does a generator need USB ports? Uh, I'm really, I'm not sure. It seems kind of odd. Your other two here, you're gonna have your, uh, we'll do the quick peel. Um, but you're going to have your two NEMA, uh, your NEMA duplex outlets here. So this is going to be your standard uh, 20 amp, right? Because they have the little bar, the hack on the side there. That's a 20 amp versus a 15 amp. And your two breaker resets here. This one is going to go over to this side. And then your other breaker here is going to be here for your parallel kit. 
So as with any generator, uh, this comes with the opportunity for a grounding stake. So should you ground your generator when you're using it? Yes, absolutely. Have I ever done that? Personally, no. Uh, I guess I, I roll the dice every time I use one of these. So again, that, you know, it provides uh, less chance of electrocution there. Uh, and then you have your quiet power technology here. So again, this has got a, your you know, flexible plastic sleeve over it. Uh, so it should be kind of waterproof, but that's going to, to adjust the generator so that whenever it's in its QPT, uh, your quiet power technology, uh, it drops the engine load uh, so that it's going to be running, you know, putting out as much power as you're consuming. It's gonna reduce its noise a little bit here. Uh, other things that this has got, which is kind of cool, is so the gas tank here uh, I think I've never uh, filled a generator and not had it overflow uh, is you got this nice little gutter here so it'll come out the side so it keeps the gas from pooling in there and so your your little tray here is going to be kind of you know a, a softer plastic you got your gas cap uh, so it's got the you know you can't over tighten when you open it it is tethered uh, so it's got like basically what feels like a PTFE right like a almost like a piece of weed eater line that tethers the cap here You've got a filter, uh, or probably not a filter, but kind of a little, um, I don't know, almost funnel diffuser. I don't know what you'd call it. Uh, a little breather vent in there. Uh, so I guess if you pull that out, there's a little lip here that it sits on. So make sure it's seated properly. Uh, close that up. We come to this side here. And again, uh, we end up here with our oil fill, which we will check out here in a minute. There we go. Okay. So, so here you can see kind of the internals of the engine. Uh, you're going to have your oil fill as we talked about. And uh, here's your carb. So it's nice that this actually pops off this easy. Again, I hadn't tried this out on my other one. Uh, you know, this is it's a good quality plastic. I wouldn't expect this to crack. It's going to have quite a bit of uh, ductility there. It pops in with these little studs that go into these little grommet holes. It's got a nice foam backing, so that's going to dampen and attenuate quite a bit, bit of your sound. Uh, you also have your oil fill cover here, again with that same plastic and same foam. So good attention to detail. Again, you know, these generators are going to be a ton better than you know the Generax and smaller inverters that you had probably what, eight years ago, ten years ago. Uh, but uh, important to note is going to be this little fastener here. So whenever you screw this out, this is going to allow you to dump your carb. This is another one of those units, much like you know the Generax, where the the switch has you know kind of your run and your off, and then whenever you turn it into off, it automatically cuts the engine, right? It grounds out your spark plug. This unit's got the same thing, so really there's no way that you could run the tank dry. So in order to prevent your carb from getting gummed up, if you're not going to be running your unit every you know probably once every month or other month. Uh, what you do is you just kind of open this fastener up here. It'll pull itself out, and then it'll open a little drain, and then you can see this little hose, and the hose is going to come out right down here. So uh, you're able to dump that without too much issue. Again, if your carb does get gummed up, it looks like you just got a couple of fasteners here that are pretty easy to get to. Let's see if we can turn this thing more head on. Um, but a couple little fasteners here, uh, and so you can pull that carb off and stick it into an ultrasonic cleaner. I've had carbs get gummed up. Uh, if you're looking for an ultrasonic cleaner, you can go onto Amazon and get one of those smaller jewelry ones, uh, disassemble it, remove any plastic bits, uh, put it into one of those ultrasonic cleaners. They're like, what, 30 bucks? And then you get your carb, uh, carb cleaning solution is what I've used. I think the bottle is like also 30 bucks uh, and you'll only need a tiny bit of it. But uh, that's everything from this side. So we'll get the main cover put back on and then uh, we'll, Go over to the other side here. Let's see what we got. So, okay, as we were talking about before, uh, here's your, you got your cold start, so that's gonna keep your choke applied. So it's got the, not auto choke, but just kind of the programmed in choke here. Then you got your run setting, and then you're off. So you'll normally, you know, First couple of pull starts are going to be here, and then you'll move it into the run once it's running. Uh, and then once you're done, you'll kill it with that. We also have our add fuel treatment stabilizer here. Check and add oil, your standard uh, affair of 
cautions and warnings. There we go. So feel free to pause the video here if, uh, if you see anything that you're interested in seeing. Like we said, your pull starts here. Uh, it's got over here, uh, your exhaust. It's got a little mesh screen in here. Uh, that's your spark arrester. I guess theoretically you could remove that should you need to. Uh, and then over on here, we didn't really talk about it, but if you press in the tab here, you're going to be able to remove the spark plug cover. So a little Phillips or a flathead screwdriver will get that. So again, I'm not going to gap the spark plug or pull it out right now. So I think we'll be good with that. Uh, the other cool feature that I really do like is the handles in their materials on um, this generator. And I think it's bigger brother, like the past couple of generations of this have always had these dual handles. Uh, I like them because if you're moving this with a friend, you know, you can both grab a side and then carry it in between you. I, however, uh, appreciate a little bit the middle one so you can get a little bit better, uh, I guess, dexterity to kind of like maneuver the thing to get in doorways and stuff like that. This one here is just kind of awkward, right? It's really front heavy. It sags. Uh, yeah, it's not the worst balance in the world, but I think they probably could have pushed that up a little bit better. You know, change some of its profile geometry here, potentially, you know, move this forward a little bit. Uh, and then you could have moved this handle maybe an inch or two forward, uh, get a little bit better of a feel there. But overall, it's not bad. Uh, and again, you know, I mean, this is all speaking from experience. I've got, you know, the other one sitting right there, which we'll open up here in a few. Okay, so before we can get running, we need two pieces. That's going to be our oil and our gasoline. Okay, we've got the garage door open. I've got uh, about six binding rigs in here, so I've got like probably four, maybe 5,000 watts of uh, GPUs running in my garage right now, and the thing is like 85, and it is toasty. So luckily we're balancing that out with the outside here. But, uh, okay, so it comes with your oil, as we talked about briefly. This comes with 13.5 uh, you know, fluid ounces, 400 milliliters, or 0.4 liters of oil. That is theoretically how much this unit takes. Uh, the instructions are to open up your oil cap here. And then it looks like our O-ring backed off. So there we go. Uh, so it looks like it was coming with us threading itself out. So you wanna make sure that this is gonna be up around the neck here. So you don't wanna lose that. Otherwise, if you carry this unit, you're going to end up with oil leaking out. So we will just push this down, work it down, and then hope that was probably just maybe a, an oopsie during manufacturing. But uh, we also have your, your drip tray here for oil. Uh, this is actually one of the best ones that I've seen. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit more on that. Okay, so I absolutely love this. So having looked at a Champion and a Generac and another Generac and the Baja and another Champion and the Briggs and Stratton, this is the first company that's actually done anything right with this. So this little trough here is kind of removable. So you could theoretically pull it out here. Let's see if we can open it here. Let me grab a flashlight. So you can kind of see the trough there, if I can point it right, uh, is right down there. And uh, the first piece is you could pull it out theoretically. Second off, it's got a tiny little gutter right here at the very, very front. You can't really see it, but it leaks out to right here. So it, it terminates down here. So if you're spilling oil, it's not going to end up in a cavity. It's not going to kind of meniscus back around here and then flow down because this is actually interfering with the aluminum. Uh, the little trough here is interfering with the aluminum uh, uh, fill port. So when you screw up with oil, which I have done on literally every generator I've got, uh, that is going to be a super awesome feature. We'll put in all of the oil. any generator you're going to be looking at the bottom of the threads there the general rule of thumb uh, is going to be look for oil kind of right at the bottom of those threads and that'll indicate that it's full uh, because these are a splash lubrication system uh, you can overfill uh, I'll, I'll say that but the chances of overfilling are less devastating in as long as it's kind of a minor overfill And if anyone has more context on that, please feel free to put that in the comments. So pull this out slowly. Okay, 
and we'll see if we can save our trough a little bit here by pulling out the funnel and it looks like it's leaking out a little bit so probably there was a little bit of oil left over from manufacturing testing and so they tell you to just use up all the oil in the bottle there erring on the side of caution and whatever it doesn't need it's just going to kind of puke out whenever you pull out the funnel so uh, probably should have been wearing gloves but again it's right there on the threads uh, and I think we actually we saved it pretty well there isn't much here I think this may be the most successful oil fill we've done to date we'll take this back uh, and if these ever seize up you can see it's got kind of these little rabbit ears on the top and so the beauty of these is you take a file pocket knife whatever you can kind of wedge it in between these and you can use it to tighten or loosen uh, these should always be hand tight I don't think you'd ever want to loose or uh, tighten that way but it works great if you break your seal you know on chainsaws they have that a lot and sometimes with the auto bar oiling you know those can really vacuum on there and you can struggle to get rid of them so uh, finger tight that and we'll put this back on and get that locked so we put in a couple of glugs of fuel uh, you can see here how this kind of caught uh, hopefully the lights gonna shimmer on that a little but uh, we'll get it started here so as always we put it into the start and run Let's see if we can collapse the table here okay I will say uh, this is yeah it's very quiet it's running very smoothly it's sitting on arguably the <laughs> most unstable table uh, and it's not bad uh, again uh, you're probably going to hear that let's see what the audio so uh, the audio mix can probably detect a little bit of that but it's not bad a couple of features that are kind of questionable but cool are going to be the blue leds uh, why they went with blue not sure why they only work whenever the thing is running and they don't really light up that much also not sure but uh, so this is what we've got so let's get uh, some power testing going here okay so we'll put this thing outside a little bit so we don't fume ourselves so I have been corrected before in my videos should you be running these in a garage like I did no you shouldn't uh, you're right you can get carbon monoxide poisoning I mean testament to the low levels in here the thing hasn't been sounding off from its CO alarm so it's not a deadly level but it's probably a good habit to not be in uh, running your equipment in your garage so uh, don't do what I'm doing here unless again you're just fueling it up and you've got lots and lots of fresh air so our standard fare is going to be the gauntlet so we're going to take our oscilloscope which is still working uh, and we will be looking at its waveform both at idle and under load we also will be able to apply some load with our amp meter here or I guess we can probably just use the Belkin more easily uh, and so we can get an idea of what kind of wattage we're pulling so we can observe we will be using the what Bayco extension cord three-way adapter with a uh, fine for this application but whenever we do our heavy load testing is going to be a no bueno uh, this is a 14 wire gauge so not great uh, but at least you know we're not an 18 or something so we got our power here let's plug this in to our death trap here and see what we've got so right now hopefully you can see right there we got this pulled in a little closer so you can see this really really nice sine wave this is this is perfect uh, you know compare this to some of my other videos you're gonna see that this one looks just as good maybe even a little bit better there's a lot less chop again the sine wave is in you know it's electronic so it's going to take a voltage and it steps up 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 and then it starts to go down 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 so the fidelity of this right your 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 sampling rate your frequency is going to dictate how smooth this is at some point we'll get a video in here where we should look at you know a modified sine wave a square wave uh, or actually look at the goal zero the goal zero video had a square wave uh, or a modified sine wave and so you can kind of see how that works so under no load this works really really well but let's 
get this going. We've got our little heater here. Uh, this is going to be a, I want to say it gets up to 1200 watt, 1500 watt peak it says. Uh, it's just a Tenergy basic uh, heater here. So we'll turn this thing, thermostat all the way down. We'll turn it on to fan. So now we're running 22 watts, 21, 22. And then uh, you can see a little bit of blip in the electronics here whenever we turn this on. Uh, let me resume out. There we go. Uh, so now let's take this and go up to the low setting. So you can hear the, uh, the wattage go up a little bit. Now we're at 1200 watts while it's trying to catch up. And you can see the waveform is completely fine. And then we'll go to the highest. So it's 1600, 1700. You can probably see in the background here, we've got some blinking. Okay, the blinking went away, so it kind of settled out. Uh, it is very, uh, very loud. It's kind of subjective, right? It's kind of uh, echoing there off the Mercedes. But we'll go with a lower setting. So we're back to around 800. And then the low, low setting and then off, and then we'll crank it hard. So it's trying to catch up, and it's good again. Okay, so that's kind of, uh, I guess, what we see there. One thing we did see was uh, I wasn't actually paying too close of attention here. Let me see if we can just catch this real time with our frequency, since we do have that. I suspect your frequency and amplitude are gonna be dropping here quite a bit. So we've got our RMS here, oh, there we go. So what we're looking at here is going to be, let me see if we can touch this. So we've got our frequency being 60 hertz, which is what we want. We have duty cycle 50%, so that means that 50% of our voltage is above zero volts and 50% is below. Uh, so that's good, right? The closer to 50% you are, the better. We are looking at cycle, do we have? Ah, uh, VRMS, right? So we're at 100, uh, 124 volts, so that is you know, standard wall, it's going to be 120 plus or minus a few volts. We're well within. So let's hit it real quick and we'll see what happens. So I went to the, uh, okay, so VRMS went down to a, like 90 volts or something. So we'll try to do that one more time. That's the high setting. So we drop down quite a bit and duty cycle staying the same, 60 hertz frequency. So and then one last one here. Oh, struggling. Okay. So let's do a quick recap of what we just saw there. Uh, and I guess some, some major observations from testing this thing right now. Again, quick and dirty test. Uh, this unit is going to be first off quite a bit louder than the smaller generators, right? If you get a, you know, the Generac 800, 900 watt running or, you know, 1200 watt running, whatever model, some of those like, you know, running in closer to a thousand watt range, they're going to have a smaller motor. They're going to be a lot more fuel efficient. They're going to be a lot more quiet, even under load. This is going to be the kind of thing that, you know, if you're running this at 2 a.m. and you're trying to run, you know, a 2000 watt heater or something, you're going to make your neighbors mad. Uh, and so, you know, it being a very quiet, it is, it is quiet relative to, I don't know, like a, a pressure washer. Uh, I would honestly say that this is probably on par with my, uh, you know, the Honda engine on my Husqvarna lawnmower, uh, push mower. So it's going to be louder at idle. You're going to have no problem, right? If you're trying to run your fridges overnight and, you know, keep your phones charged and a TV on or something, 
Absolutely, this thing's quiet enough. But under heavy load, it gets a lot louder. The, I guess the opposite end of that coin is the fact that it is putting out a lot more wattage, right? I sustain, this thing is going to be able to do double what some of those like smaller Generax uh, will be able to do. And so if you need the power, it's got it. Uh, and at the lower running uh, wattages, this thing is going to be, it'll sip gas and it'll be pretty quiet. Uh, the other thing that we noticed whenever we were looking at your, the oscilloscope here was that your frequency, your 60 hertz, is locked in. And so regardless of what the voltage is, regardless of your, your amplitude there, your frequency is maintained. That's going to be good for your, your inductive loads, uh, things like motors and stuff uh, that really want that 60 hertz. It may struggle a little bit to get those going um, due to the motive force required for it to you know, go a full... I guess pole to pole revolution or partial revolution there, uh, just because it doesn't have a lot of oomph from you know the magnetism there, because the I guess the thing that we did see suffer was voltage right voltage was dropping down from an RMS of around 124 volts down to I think we saw 60 or 80 volts, so that's kind of brownout territory if you're doing any kind of uh, um, if you're doing industrial controls which again you know, this is a consumer grade uh, you know inverter generator. So, you know, unless you have, you know, if you have solenoids that are acting as contactors to latch open some kind of system, that 40, 50, 60 volt is going to cause them to, to cycle and you're going to burn out equipment. So uh, if, you, if you're running a PLC and you've got some ice cube relays uh, on your conveyor belts or whatever, I would not recommend uh, using this. But in your standard home gamer, fridge, freezer, whatever, uh, this is going to be fine. So... Right now, it's April 5th. If you go onto Amazon, you're going to see these running for about 750 As I said at the beginning of this video, I got this and the other one on sale for around, uh, what, $450 on Amazon. So, you know, I could get all, two for basically the price of one of these. Uh, would I spend $750 on it? Uh, probably yes. Uh, one of the differentiators Briggs has, so Briggs is you know, financially maybe a little bit troubled. Uh, I've heard that right now, you know, they're having some issues with small engine uh, component sourcing since most of that stuff is made overseas. But Briggs & Stratton is one of the few companies that doesn't white label their product, right? So what you can say with a high degree of certainty is that this unit and everything in it was designed in Briggs & Stratton's offices by their engineers. Uh, they find, you know, their contract manufacturer that they have overseas and they're building them. This isn't Shenzhen Motor Company Limited producing millions of these and Briggs and Stratton is just printing out their logo and slapping it on the side, right? You're going to see that though with, you know, Pulsar, with Generac, with uh, Westinghouse, with a bunch of these brands that aren't, you know, your big ones, right? Uh, Honda, I guess Yamaha, I don't even know what Yamaha is doing anymore, right? I mean, they were partnered with Kohler for a while. From a you know, parts compatibility perspective, because it is a Briggs & Stratton, you're probably going to have a higher probability of being able to find parts even in the future, because should Generac or any of these brands who are using white label sever partnership with their white label manufacturer, their contract manufacturer, and I guess in this scenario, it's probably not even a contract. They're just straight up putting their logo on to you know, a third party generator and calling it their own. Uh, so if they were to sever ties, you may have part availability issues in the future. Uh, and I guess, you know, with the state of transportation and shipping right now and the supply chain, you're probably going to have issues getting anything from anybody. Um, but I would imagine that these units are probably going to have a little bit more longevity in terms of part availability. This is the one here with probably 40 or 50 hours on it. This one is the one we just unboxed today. So um, would I would I recommend them to a friend? Yeah, at $750, I'd probably be a little bit more choosy, make sure that's the best, right? If you can get a Honda for the same price, probably a Honda is going to be maybe a little bit better. So anyhow, that was a review of the Briggs & Stratton P2400 generator. Uh, if you like this video, please make sure to subscribe. We're getting pretty close to a thousand views. I think as of filming this, I have around 600 subscribers. So that that's, I guess, far exceeded my expectations. I, I didn't expect this channel to ever have you know, any, to be honest. So the fact that this channel's come this far is pretty amazing. Uh, hopefully we get some more cool stuff going, uh, both in the, you know, the tool side as well as more equipment reviews. 
And please make sure you're subscribed and click the bell icon so that whenever I do publish more videos here, uh, you'll be notified. Uh, and hopefully I can get back onto a more regular video publishing cadence instead of, you know, once every three months or so. So, as always, thanks for watching and check back soon for more videos.